Welcome to Infinity Rewatch. And I think first, right off the bat, let me just say one thing. I'm Andrew Fantasia, by the way. I am so thankful as a person who has to write down episode titles and hashtags as part of this pro- this process of podcasting. I'm so thankful that we have a show that only has four letters in its title. Falcon and Winter Soldier, you can learn a little thing from Loki's title. Hi, welcome to the show, everybody. And with me, as always, are two beautiful people. That's right. Welcome, everybody. Uh, you know, I, I always want to start with your savior is here. But I, I you know, I just don't want to play that repetitive card as much. But um, yeah, here we are. Ryan J. Whitehead here. Hi, I'm Anna. I'm back again. Thank you for having Woo! me. This is very exciting. I have no one to talk about Loki with, so this is oh god, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh my god. I know. Oh god. Oh god. This is giving me a live all day. Oh god. These are, these are such a... <laughs> Loki is such a water cooler show, but nobody around the water cooler at Anna's work. Well, you know, COVID. COVID is a water cooler talk. That's right. Uh, Now it's the syringe cooler. Everybody gathers to get a a booster shot. Oh, God. (laughs) That's terrible. That sounds like the worst thing ever. Yeah, I would not (laughs) want to. People look back at this podcast, they'll be like, man, that was a time. Like, they went through some stuff. I know. It's like I got my second dose vaccination moved up to June. I'm like, yeah, I can touch humans. I'm so excited. I can I can touch everybody. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm still trying to work out if I can get mine bumped up because right now it's September 9th and that feels far away. Oh yeah, so bud. We'll see what we can do. But at least in the meantime, we have Loki episode two to oh, keep. Oh, absolutely. Who boy was this episode something else? This is I think this might be uh my favorite hour of Marvel Disney Plus television that we have gotten yes. in the year of our Lord 2021. Absolutely. Oh man. Oh, totally. Actually, so I'm gonna say right out of the gate, it's funny. I uh, I was talking with someone yesterday. Her name is Erica. She was talking about how she's been watching the Marvel stuff, but she's again, and this brings up an awesome point about the wonderful world of Marvel. Um, is that they're bringing in new people. Like they found a way to bring in new people. It's not just for the hardcores anymore. They just found some way to keep. Uh, the casuals invested mm-hmm. and more interested, but also uh, people that have never watched the Marvel stuff have been like, oh, it's kind of like the same stuff, is it? No, it's not the same <laughs> it stuff anymore. And, and Ryan, it's not even that. It's still easy to follow. You don't have to be yeah. someone that likes comics or let alone like anything Marvel related. You can like WandaVision, for example. Like my partner does is not into this stuff and he was able to watch it and he enjoyed it. And he didn't feel lost. And I feel the same thing with with Loki. Any person that's never seen a single Marvel movie or anything related to comics can watch it and and, and enjoy it. It's a very well done show. Like production, costumes, everything. They're, they're, like, I guess it's very... It's not often that you see, like, especially like superhero stuff. That someone takes the time to put that much detail, like even the commercials in WandaVision and even like the little things like um, the little like the the clock man, like the TVA clock man, the training guy, like just the details, the details, the colors. Oh, man, it's just oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, for sure. And I, I will say, though, that they were like, yeah, like like this this uh, individual I was talking to Erica she was like she's like it's just amazing how Marvel's just throwing out all this content and honestly I'm proud of Marvel man way to just find a way to find a platform and constantly bring out this content and I have to agree with the advertising Wednesdays are the new Fridays I'm, yes. I'm more excited for Wednesdays now than I am for Friday <laughs> Yeah. amazing it's a wonderful world we're living yes in. yes the bad batch is great and all but it does not have loki in it it's true. and it does not have the tva in it and the tva's um design uh you guys bring up the the, the design of just how, yes. how the show has been made that was one of my my biggest notes and if i could draw little heart emojis on my notes i would but i i'm trying to watch the screen at the same time so i'm trying to be very mm-hmm. sparse with the notes but i love that 70s aesthetic that they yes. put into this whole production design. And after I finished the episode, I was in such a 70s mood. Like I had work I had to do. And I was like, you know what? I'll do that later. 
I want to watch a 70s movie. So I put on one of my favorite 70s movies, The Taking of Pelham 123 with my man, oh, Walter Matthau. Uh, that, like, it just feels so comfortable, man. It feels so comfortable to see 70s stuff in the world. And, and like, the locker room and uh, the... Um, the judge, the head judge, uh, Ravenna Slayer, uh, Renslayer, her office, like it's all so beautiful. Even like I, the the cubicle C where where Loki gets sent to do clerk work. I want to work there. I want to work at the TVA. Sign me up. Where can I submit my resume? Yes, <laughs> it's it's just so it's like very corporate. But I just like that they did their homework. Like even the style, like the colors that were really popular back in that era were like those muted browns, those yellows, those oranges, which now are like super outdated. They're like hideous clashing colors now, but like they, I just really like the contrast between something that's like obviously very magic. Like there's magic involved, supernatural, like supernatural magic, but something about like the 60s, 70s throwback makes it feel very normal. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I wish we could bring gotta, those colors back. <laughs> I I gotta say, you know, you bring up a good point on it. it it's it's so weird with the mute the muted brown and or and the really bright orange. But what I think is also really weird is you take the seventies and you're taking like this like very futuristic fantasy experience, yeah. which is not too common kind of timelines you're gonna yeah. put together. Like on the first episode when he was showing Loki. Um, Owen Wilson's character was showing Loki like this is the TVA and it's like this futuristic city. He's like, is this a hologram? Is this fake? No, this is real. And it's such a weird contrast, like such a futuristic city to this very throwback, like 60, 70 times. So before we start the podcast, this is something I brought up to Fantasia, which is so something interesting that was happening during that era was the Red Scare, right? A lot of propaganda was being pumped in the United States, you know, for fear of communism. You know, people were tattling on their neighbors that they were communists, whatever, whatever. And um, if you remember from Doctor Strange, the wizards were supposed to be protecting the time with the time stone. But now you're telling me it's these like timekeepers now. So I have a feeling that Marvel isn't doing this on purpose so it's not like oh we're throwing away what we said in dr strange but we're there is something nefarious going on because even the commercials in the tva if you look at the bottom it's very much like a political like a political uh commercial where they say like sponsored or approved by and everything is approved by the tva so it's it, especially with the uh like the throwback 60 70 era it does feel very like a lot of propaganda. It's very pro TVA, very pro this timeline, right? Because we we go, we're shown that like originally all the timelines together, uh, separate, were were a mess, right? They were fighting all the time. That these elders had to bring together. So you're basically saying that this specific timeline is the correct time, only the correct timeline. And even Loki said it. So there's no such thing as free will. So this is already predetermined. This is going to happen. This is, it, and it's not because it's meant to happen. It's the choice of it's it's a choice of the elders by allowing only this timeline to survive but nothing else to survive so it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like marvel is saying that this is no doctor strange is no longer canon because we know that doctor strange is definitely going to have to play a part in this story and definitely wanda wanda vision because we're already we already we've talked in one division, they in the commercial they slightly talked about the nexus like they mentioned the nexus and they've Obviously, like at the end, we know that it's going to happen. Something's going to happen with the multi her looking in the multiverse. So she's definitely going to be a, a variant. But yeah, that's what I brought up. I was like, it just feels like it's very purposeful that the fact that the TVA is kind of that throwback is not is not just because it's aesthetically pleasing and because it's a very structured mm -hmm. time back then. I think it's because there's a lot of propaganda involved and a lot of like forced structure so these people that's all their lives that's all they know the guy didn't even know what a fish was so you only know being a tv agent right it's you know first of all just wow that <laughs> just, shoo, shoo, that like oh man that is this is it guys this is this is marvel talk right here yeah so yes this uh wow way to put your uh strong foot forward there on a i know uh, man <laughs> I'm dying. I, I need to talk to people. There's, there's a lot to unpack with that, though, because 
First of all, the, the goal of uh, Doctor Strange and the Sorcerer Supreme and the Wizards, if you will, um, their job is to just protect the world from mystical threats was their like that's their mission statement if they were a corporation that's like you know hey the sorcerers you know protecting the world from mystical threats um and that's why the beauty of uh the beauty of thor ragnarok was you just see dr strange so comfortable in his skin that time doesn't move normally for him he skips like the way thor kept jump cutting to like different spots and he's just like would you stop doing that but that's because he's so comfortable with the language of time that the mundane things of getting from point a to point b is just so unnecessary so he's just kind of skipping ahead but the whole theme of dr strange was you can't mess with the laws of nature like you can't mess with that and and obviously time so it's almost as if it's almost as if because they're like they're the protectors of the time stone and Doctor Strange, uh, you know, you're not supposed to mess with time because that you can't because the check always comes due, as uh, Baron Mordo says. It almost seems that they they would technically be the villains of the TVA or vice versa, because I think what Marvel is doing right now is just creating this blanket statement. And they said it in the show. There's no good or in, there's no inherently good or evil. It's just choices, right? Like it's, it's the freedom of choice. And so with that being said, I think that, yeah, I think you're definitely onto something on it. There's something about the TVA projecting that they're like everything that's happened the way it's supposed to happen because we have the right timeline. Mm-hmm. But to be fair, I think it's Kang's timeline and Kang wants things to play out a certain way. So he stays on top because oh. otherwise he doesn't. And then you have this like nexus event. Oh shit. Well, other thing that I wanted to actually bring up. So in this episode or the first episode, we see that Loki knows what's going to, well, in this first episode and second episode, Loki fully knows what's going to happen to him. He knows he dies. He knows Asgard doesn't exist anymore. And that nothing works out for him at the end. Right. So for him, he, he's, there's no winning for Loki. If he stays at the TVA, he'll be exterminated anyways or brought back to his original timeline. If he's brought back to his original timeline, he's going to die. So I feel like the direction of Loki is to still be a variant, to to split this timeline so he can fix his timeline. So does that mean maybe the Avengers never beat him? Maybe Thanos doesn't happen? Or maybe it does happen, but in a different way. Right, because we're we're being shown a lot of scenes. Well, mind you, there's only two episodes, but there's a lot of like, especially in the first episode, what really struck me is that like shot of like the Avengers looking down at Loki and him having that dialogue about it. Him kind of reliving or revisiting the past and what would have been his present. So would he not still, like, I feel like there's going to be still a power struggle to change the time, not maybe change the timeline, but split the timelines. So other alternative multiverses can exist independently. So it's not about this timeline is bad or this timeline is good, but more like that's, I mean, that's what we're getting to, right? Like Loki says it, like, I don't have a choice. There is no, what about free will? Where's the choice, right? If you separate all those timelines, those timelines could ideally you know, if this is propaganda, they could leave independently. So Loki doesn't have to die. Asgard doesn't have to not exist. It would just exist in an entirely different timeline. And we already know Wanda is going to be trying to split the timelines anyways, because she's going to try to find a universe where her children are at. Sorry, I'm so All excited. Right, man. <laughs> I'm so excited. No, no, I no, I just this is good. This is this is conversation, people. Uh, if you're listening in here, I'm hoping I'm hoping you're smashing that like and subscribe button because this is this is conversation. This is a lot of people are going like, oh yeah, you know, this is what's gonna happen. This is gonna happen. But I love that we're discussing the rules of the yes. MCU because this this is the real this is the real meat and potatoes of the whole MCU here. Like the first episode and you know, I'm not even going to warn you about spoilers because if you're listening to this, clearly you're watching it. Watching you along better here. not complain about spo- spoiler alert. We're going to spoil everything. Spoiler yeah. alert. 
we're, we're everything yeah. is we're ready. actually we're gonna spoil like Black Panther Wakanda forever. That's how spoiler we're Absolutely. gonna Absolutely. Santa doesn't <laughs> exist. <laughs> but so my, my point is here is that like by establishing that in the TVA, the infinity stones are literally paperweights. Like they mean nothing. Yes. Magic means nothing. nothing. I um and I like that you bring up the whole relation of, you know, the symmetry of of actual history in Marvel because that's how Marvel kind of does their satire. Like that's that's how they do it. They they reflect of events in the real world and just put it in a fictional plane to just digest it in a different way, right? So, you know, they say history is wit- written by the winners. So Kang is clearly the winner because he's defined the timeline. So he's going to protect everything he does from there on in, right? So there's in terms of the the like Wanda and creating like these Nexus events to find a thing. Yeah, I think that I think what what Loki may prove with this show is if everything's predetermined, then he can't even be a god of mischief because he's supposed to be doing what he's doing anyway. Like that's the whole that's the whole thing of the conversation. Is like why why would he be the god of mischief if, mm-hmm. if everything's preordained? And it was brilliant. I thought it was so brilliant the the way they figured out that the apocalypse uh, uh to go to apocalypse to hide because that's what's supposed to happen yes right so genius so but what's crazy is is that loki um plural uh figured out how to break the their own rules which is insane and, and it's it's mind-blowing so yeah, like we're in it, guys. Like we're in this world. I can't even answer how it's going to break down for you, for us. But I think it's what's brilliant right now is is magic's not the question anymore. It's not an age of miracles. It's it's literally the battle of time, time itself. Yes, and like who can manipulate time the best? That's what I feel is like who can manipulate time the best, right? So let's talk about Lady Loki because that was like. Like, that was, to me, like, the gag of the season. Like, I was not expecting that. I was not expecting... I was expecting... You weren't? Everyone was expecting... I don't know. I was not expecting Lady Loki. I was expecting something else. Like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I was, I was like... I was not expecting that. That was so good. I was so I just love the banter between them. I was like, no, I am the... No, I am the superior one. I'll dance. <laughs> well, first of all, hold on. We gotta give we gotta give Fantasia some time here. Fantasia yeah, right, thoughts right. on yes. thoughts on the laws yes. of time yes. versus magic. Tell us more about time. Well, the laws of time, I didn't write them, so I know very little about them myself. But I will say this: I think Anna, I think you're really on the right track with just the basic idea of the multiverse. Kind of needs to happen. Because if it doesn't, that's the end of Loki. Yeah. The, what, what's so interesting, and I don't even think the show has really shined a light on this yet for us, but Loki is is working with the TVA. But the TVA winning means that he gets killed by Thanos and he's that's it. He's yeah. dead. So at some point, he has to stop and turn around to Owen Wilson and be like, sorry, brother, but... I'm making a multiverse so I can go live. Uh, and plus we know we're getting movies with multiverse in it. So we kind of already know that the TVA is not going to be as successful as they want to be. Uh, but then this whole idea of it being, you know, not these three space lizards, which sounds like something Tom Cruise would believe in, but in fact, Kang the Conqueror being the one who's trying to to push things not in the way they are supposed to be, but in the way he wants them to be. Mm-hmm because of whatever reason. And that seems really plausible, especially because, you know, I get a very big brother vibe from the the time guardians there in the TVA being that yeah. they are these revered figures whose statues and photos are everywhere, but nobody ever really seems to get the chance to see them in person, which yeah. is kind of sus. Even so, the comment from, I can't remember the agent, she was the judge. She's like, I've never seen the, El- like the, like what the elder's so involved in this case it's like Mm. i don't know even that was like very how do you know what does involvement mean it just added more questions right because i don't entirely believe Mm. that anybody has like necessarily direct contact with these space lizards 
yeah, first of all, my brother, who is apparently going to be watching it at some point as we're probably doing this podcast, um, he he loves space lizards. I mean, who doesn't, right? Uh, but first of all, first of all, uh, I will get into a theory I have about where the story is going because I will. But what I will say, as the show does, I'm going to leave you listeners as we talk about this. I'm going to leave you with a little little nod that was mentioned. She said that the, they're that they're very involved and that they're always watching. So that to me is very interesting that she would drop a detail like that. Um, so because she seems to be constantly under pressure. So Renslayer, I think, is actually the key to this whole story, in my opinion. I think I think all I should be on her, um, and I will leave it at that for now. But that's, I think there's something about that. But so I, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, right now, this big conversation about the sacred timeline, I think that Anna, you, you really brought a really good plate of meat and potatoes here for us to eat. Um, sorry, it's the only metaphor I can use right now. I'm going to run with it. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's a great point. It's, I really feel like this is like propaganda mm -hmm. because in the end, the person benefiting from this is Kang because essentially Kang can control the narrative of where everything goes. Um, and so, and what I like about this is Loki is both the villain, but yet the hero in this at all at the same time. But as, as, think, a, as a player in this. But I think we talked about this, I think earlier today, where like Marvel's really taking the time, especially in these series, to really flesh out characters. So it's a lot more complicated. It's right. And even kind of Loki mentions it. It's like, it's not about enjoying killing. It's about like, I'm the villain. And it's more than that, right? Like even even him, him advocating for himself and his actions, like not because I want to kill people, but it comes with the job. Like I have, I, I have to inspire fear to get what I need because fear is the greatest tool. Like versus just being a very one dimensional character of like, of not necessarily being bloodthirsty, but just like, I don't know why I do the things that I do. I just do them because they, they feel good at the time. I feel like Marvel really tries to create very, a multi-dimensional characters that not not only that you can connect with empathize but that are more interesting like i think to me best marvel uh, villain ever killmonger fantastic because not only did you understand his motive did you empathize but he didn't feel like a villain it like it didn't feel like it was good versus evil and i really like the theme now because you kind of see it with wanda right because she'll be a misunderstood villain and maybe Loki is a misunderstood hero, right? Because I think people aren't always inherently good and people aren't always inherently evil, right? We have shades of gray. So, I mean, obviously he does good things that are deemed selfless, but he does them for a selfish reason, right? Everything has an internal motivation. So I like seeing Loki kind of not necessarily grow or question, but just like mm -hmm. that we're seeing a uh, not a one-dimensional bad guy or a one dimensional good guy. Yeah. I, I I think Marvel's in the position at this point where it's not even it's and I again I I, I hearken back to the uh the classic age of, uh not Age of Ultron um but uh Baron Strucker's line of like the Age of Miracles but this is not a battle of good and evil anymore. Like it's two sides of a coin that are no longer currency, which the best line ever mm. in a script, but it's, it's literally, it's literally just like, like it's just pieces on a chessboard and mm -hmm. it's literally just seeing how these pieces come together and who wins, who loses. Like it's, it's literally just winning and losing. Yeah. And, and, and it doesn't matter. Like that's the beauty of it now. It doesn't matter uh good and evil doesn't matter because it's all a matter of perspective mm -hmm. and eh, i i what's crazy is if you think of the lineup of villains that that marvel seems to be kind of going to or the rogues gallery if you will is uh if we all know and are praying for doom to come in at some point but he's not considered a villain either he's he's someone who literally in the comics was was right about everything and he he believes and has proven that he knows how to rule this world now is it the best like the absolute perfect way no but he he solves problems like he figures out how to solve problems 
So is he a villain? Like, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's really going to be interesting to see who, who the whole roster of villains is going to be. Yeah. Well, don't freak out, Ryan, but Dr. Doom is literally standing right behind you. Oh, Just, be cool. Be cool, man. Be cool. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> well, so uh, off the top of this episode, um, we see who we later learn is Lady Loki, mm -hmm. uh, rocking a cloak with a hood. Uh, that I wish hoods were that voluminous here in the real world, uh, so I could make myself look like the emperor more often in my yeah. daily life. I know. Uh, but she, she's rocking and she's doing some stuff at a Ren Fair. And you want to talk about twisted timelines and things happening for a reason, whatever. I just want to say this is the fourth time in less than a week that I have heard Bonnie Tyler's holding out for a hero in four different mediums. I heard it in Loki. I heard it in a YouTube video. I heard it in a TV commercial and I saw it in the trailer for the new He-Man cartoon. What is going on this week with that song? Something's up. It was in Loki. I'm trying to remember what scene. Right at the top when Lady Loki is uh, beaten up on the TVA agents. Um, yeah. yeah, they only play it for a little smidge, but it's there. Damn. And mm -hmm. something cosmic is going on. So Bonnie Tyler fans, if you're listening, help us unravel this mystery. Yes. Please. <laughs> I need to know what the connection is between this week and Holding Out for a Hero. But what is, uh, what is Lady Loki doing? She's dropping these little things. And for the life of me, I couldn't quite grasp what they were. So somebody, either of you want to want to give me a rundown here. What are those little things she's dropping? Why so do they turn purple? The vials or like whatever, they're, they essentially reset time. They were delete. They, so it's the what the TVA uses to delete mm -hmm. the, the the is it the nexus like the divergent timelines that hit the red line. So they essentially remove like remove that branch. So what Lady Loki did is that she was stealing those capsules and their like keypad that helps them open portal doors. So I don't know if she was dropping. So what could this is my theory? I think she's either dropping at a different timeline, so trying to destroy different timelines, or. Mm -hmm. Like the uh, like the capture TVA agent said, she told Lady Loki everything where the elders are, so she could be attacking them, attacking the TVA. But regardless, that whatever is happening, that timeline will not exist. Something will not. Something will be destroyed. Okay, yeah, that's right. Because when, when they turn right. purple, when all... it's when they it like disintegrates the entire timeline. Yeah, so all the like the tent is fine, but when it spreads and it hits like the TVA helmets, they go away. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it yeah. gets rid of the time travel. All right. So at the end, when she's blowing up the whole rocks cart store, that is, it's essentially deleting whatever time travel happened there as well. Well, I don't think she. I don't think she used them in the rocks on thing. I think she she teleported them somewhere else. Yes, if you but notice, we don't... the grenades the grenades go through a door, a door, uh, like yes, their door. So it could yeah. either be a, a different timeline. It could be the TVA. It could be where like the uh, you know the lizard people are at. Like, mm. I guess we'll know next I, I, episode. Here's the thing, though. See, I think again, this is one of those things where we we as Marvel fans have to be careful because. If you look too deeply, you get too deterred from like where the narrative is going. Mm -hmm. However, uh, we did talk about this earlier, and so it kind of makes sense to talk about it now because it's set up is uh, two things. One is the scene where Loki's being trained in the informational video way, which just absolutely love that scene. And plus, we have uh, Tara Strong doing the voiceover, uh, amazing voice actor, boy, amazing voice actor who's done a plethora of work, uh, especially in the comic book world too. Um, so with Miss Minutes, uh, talking about what is a Nexus event and, and also it, it goes to point, she is, is like, what if it hits the Nexus level and Loki says, well, that's very bad. So that whole scene, I believe is setting up what Lady Loki did in the end, which mm -hmm. blows my mind that Anna did not figure out that it was like, okay, but I will say to be fair, to be fair, uh, to be fair, when I saw the trailer, First time around, I was the Fantasia, and we predicted it was Doctor Doom, which was a really cool. We figured out a cool theory why it would be Doctor Doom, but it's not. And so, to be fair, that's that's our bad. God on damn that it! Part. Well, I don't know why I didn't think it was Lady Loki. I I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah. I think it was like, oh, maybe it'll be like Mutant Loki. 
<laughs> yeah, it, don't don't feel. I didn't even know who Lady Loki was till this show started. Mm-hmm. Honestly, so you're, trust me, you're fine. Um, yeah. We, uh, Ryan, remember last podcast? I said, do you think we're going to get a Roger Rabbit moment with Loki and Miss Minutes? And what did we get? Yeah, we I was totally so one. happy with him trying to swat her, and she was like, "Hi, get away from me! I'm a cartoon, and you're real." Um, yeah. that, oh, that was that was beautiful. And um, speaking of last week, Anna. I need to catch you up on something that that uh, we patented in our last podcast, mm-hmm. which is something that we called Sneaky Feige Radar. And it it, uh, it comes into play here because like Ryan just said, as Marvel fans, we've got to be really careful we don't dive too deep because then we get led astray by red herrings, particularly the reddest herring of all, Mephisto and WandaVision. We yeah. got led, we got pulled by the nose like that. So what we talked about last week was uh, kind of figuring out when... Kevin Feige was being a big old sneak. So we just had to hone our sneaky Feige radar, um, which is uh, a, a copyright Andrew Fantasia 2021. Damn. And if you, if you, uh, if you can look at what they're doing and how they're trying to misdirect you, it has made Loki so much more enjoyable to watch because I'm not leading myself down paths of disappointment. Yes, <laughs> I would agree. I like that Loki's very unpredictable. Still, mm. well, two episodes. Yeah, I, I keep remembering it's like it's only two episodes. It's an hour, but it doesn't feel like an hour. Yeah, it felt nice and long. There was a lot going on. Um, mm-hmm. I, I hope, I hope they don't get shorter um, because I think it's yeah. it's it's perfect as it is. Um, so, Lady Loki messes up the Ren Fair, but that's okay because Ren Fair music creeps me out anyway. So I'm kind of glad the Ren Fair kind of went astray. Um, and they are uh, they're trying to find out what she's doing. And they're not quite figuring it out. And Loki's just lying, which I think adds credence to what you said, Anna, about how Loki kind of needs to beat the TVA, even though he's working with them, because mm-hmm. he needs a multiverse to live. Not only to live, but to have a home, to mm-hmm. possibly have a mother. To I don't, uh, I don't know if he knows what Thor has been up to, because he only seems to be watching his life. Mm-hmm. So I don't think we've seen him watch, you know, like, post you know end game stuff where thor is like hey i'm I'm fat now whatever like we haven't seen him look at that so i think he's only looking at his own life so he doesn't know if his brother's alive or not either there's a bunch of unanswered questions and just endings and i don't think he likes that because loki doesn't like that so him jumping into that portal at the end of everything here i don't see any other alternative to that in his mind. I don't see any universe where he's like, no, I want to help the TVA because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. It'll end up getting him killed. Um, but the TVA kind of sent him on a merry little, uh, the, he, he kind of gets paired up again with Owen Wilson in an almost Woodward and Bernstein kind of way, just at this desk, plugging away, reading files, trying to solve a mystery. And that might be my favorite part because I love all that stuff. I know. Um, <laughs> Ryan, tell us about the the bureaucracy of the TVA and why you think they need to operate like a bureaucracy as opposed to the Sorcerer Supreme who operate like Hogwarts with monks. <laughs> um, so I feel like, first of all, and the reason why is Kang, Kang works, they, they even said in the show, is Kang's working on the end of the end of time like the the end of time so he's working on like I, in essence he's working on his story mm-hmm. which to me which is why Renslayer is a key part of the story because mm-hmm. to Kang Kang knows if for example because you know we're all motivated or like you know the world's motivated by three things power you know love and money I think was the third one and so uh in the story, in Kang's story, the big part of his comic book run was his love story with uh, Ravana Renslayer. And I think what's interesting about it is he knows that, maybe he knows that they're they're meant to be together, but in this particular timeline, maybe she, or maybe, yeah, in this particular timeline, maybe there's something that's preventing her from, from, from being with him. Ah. And he's trying to maintain a timeline where in the end they become together. So, so in order for that not to happen, uh, obviously Nexus events would have to take place. 
Uh, and so what better way to do it than maybe there was a big battle and he knows that in this big battle, she ends up getting killed. So he tries to reset the timeline so that they can finally be together. And that's why they can't allow Nexus events because there'll be a battle and therefore she might get caught in it. So remember how I talked about my theory was, was that, uh, my theory was, was that, um, uh, the, the timekeepers are always watching, mm -hmm. right? So they're, and she feels like they're always watching her. There's this pressure that they're like, they're watching this case and making sure everything goes, or goes safely kind of thing. Um, now there's two clues here that I think play a very important thing. First yes. of all, clue number one. Okay. You guys ready for this? Yeah. Clue number one is she's very specifically mentioned that she, uh, that uh, first of all, Mobius Owen Wilson casting could awesome. not have picked a better actor to keep this entertaining and fun uh, along alongside Tom Hiddleston as well. Um, but she very, very went out of her way to say, look, you're not my only investigator. So mm -hmm. someone else is, is obviously doing their thing and reporting back to her. Um, and the second clue, um, which is the second clue to me is someone's always watching her and she had the blue pen with the devil symbol on it. Yes. The same one we saw on the gum, the kablooey gum. Um, so my theory is, so Kang wants Renslayer and they, he wants them to be a happy couple. So he's trying to prevent, uh, all these things. So Kang can have a long lasting, you know, long live the King kind of thing. What if, what if Renslayer doesn't like that kind of lifestyle, you know, like, mm. what, like if everything's preordained, you know, and everything's got to be a certain way, like what if she doesn't want that? Right. So why would you, why? And especially if you're in a position of power, uh, especially hers, then, and you're being watched all the time. How are you going to, how are you going to steer the ship in a way that doesn't make you look bad? And that's why I have a theory that maybe she recruited Lady Loki, and and now she's being more that she can hand more than she can handle. And because now you've essentially educated someone on the rules of time, and play out this whole sacred timeline thing, and now and I think that she bit off more than she could chew. And she can't, obviously, she can't force her hand. So she's kind of playing along with everything that's happening. And thus, in the end, Kang is trying to prevent something that is inevitable to happen, which breaks the rules of time. Right. But was, in essence, keeps time flowing. I was not <laughs> expecting that. This is this is this is a Ryan J. Whitehead humble theory. <laughs> I could miss the mark completely, but yeah. and this is one of those things where you have to be very careful. But one thing that makes me feel right about it is that it doesn't involve any other cameos or special characters that will probably mm. never appear, Mephisto. And, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but in my mind, it just makes perfect sense. Like, damn, it, it, it just, it, cause you always seem to recruit a Loki to, to throw something completely off. It's like off its motion. Right. So yeah, that's that's you, my uh, big theory. You know what this is like? Not, I don't know. This is giving me very much Matrix vibes. Like, although this is predetermined, not predetermined to happen. These people need to exist. Like, you need a protagonist and an antagonist. Like, like there were many versions of Loki, and they needed to exist. Sorry, I like, I'm trying to like wrap my, that's such a good theory. Like, I, I just see it as like, these people just have to, like, Loki has to exist. Like, you have to have an antagonist and you have to have a protagonist to your story. So is Loki, does Loki just need to exist in some way or another? Does he that just need? Sense. Yes, because you need mischief because that yes. creates free will. <laughs> That's why. So, did, so the, do you think the TVA created kind of like the ultimate Loki that understands the complexities of time? 
I think that the conversation in the very first episode that is still my favorite scene to date, even though the Lady Loki reveal, I love a good Marvel reveal. I really, really, really do. But that conversation, that interrogation with Mobius and Loki yeah. is the key to unlocking. It's, it's kind of like the Rosetta Stone of this entire show. Yes. Is it, I, like, I, I want to watch it again and again because I feel like Mobius was getting at something and he was trying to essentially, he was trying to really drive home the point that he was saying, which was that Loki plays plays an important role because he brings the best out of everybody. Yes. And, and he doesn't do it intentionally. It's because he's just mischievous. Yeah. And in the end, that's that's why he's wondering, like, are you really a bad person? No, because in the end, he's helping people become their best. Like Thor, he made Thor understand, who, like, who, who to be is. and how to be. Yeah, like how to be the best version of himself, right? Because he realized Loki's patterns. He knew he was going to be a mischievous person. So Thor was able to teach himself and become smarter and become better. So I think I think Mobius in the long run of this whole story, I think Mobius is actually the hero because he knew bringing in Loki to to stop a Loki. I think that's actually him making a hero out of Loki because he knows what Loki is capable of and he knows that he can he can turn someone good. That's Shit. beautiful, man. That's Shit, a beautiful Ryan. arc that's, for him. That's so good. Yeah. But it's true, right? If you look at the first episode, a lot of time, a lot of that episode was that an initial interrogation of like, not just, ter- he said it, I'm not just trying to figure out what makes you, t- what, uh, what a Loki, what makes a Loki tick. I'm trying to understand why, right? And it, and it just took so, even Loki had a really hard time kind of like understanding the question, right? And even at the end, mm-hmm. he's like, when he finally admits the feed and he's like, it's not about, it's not about hurting people. I just, it's about it's the just... illusion of control. That's yes. what it is. Yeah. Exactly. The, um, the idea of Mobius being the hero is beautiful. It's so beautiful. And it's, it, it feels like it would be a very touching way to make us, you know, fall in love with this character that we've just met. You, like after 11 years of yeah. this story being told. Mm-hmm. Now, Ryan, j- just so I'm clear, in your theory, Lady Loki is Renslayer's secondary advisor? Right? Okay. And I love that because it is a perfect example of Sneaky Feige Radar. Okay? Because when she shows Mobius that pen that you took the screenshot of for us and it says that it's uh, the Franklin D. Roosevelt High School. That's what it says on the pen. There's a really quick line that I almost missed because I was looking at the pen where you hear Mobius, I think even off screen, you don't see his face. He hands the pen back to her and he says something along the lines of, oh, I guess you got that from your new secret advisor or whatever. So that felt like sneaky Feige being like, ooh, who's this advisor? Is it Reed Richards? Is it Franklin Richards? Because the thing says Franklin Roosevelt. Uh, and my sneaky figurator was like, I'm not going to guess anything. I'm just going to look at that pen. And uh, sometimes a pen is just a pen. But this is this theory gives it weight whilst still, you know, Telling Sneaky Foggy, we don't we don't believe your your sneaks. We don't we believe don't, your sneaky sneaks. No, I'm I'm still holding up my shield that says Ralph Boner on it, and I'm like shielding myself from more red herrings. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I I I, I don't want to blow your mind. You may already know this, but you know that Kang the Conqueror is a Richards, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Think you did blow my mind, sir. <laughs> what? Yeah, his his real name, Kang the Conqueror's real name is Nathaniel Richards. Any relation to Reed and Franklin and Sue? Oh yeah, he's part of the, the whole lineage. Are we are we like looking into like is this is this kind of like <laughs> the slow, slow expands into uh Fantastic Four? Is this what's happening right now? 
Well, here's here's another little little oh my God, piece Ryan. of the. Am I blo- <laughs> this, I love this. This is so good. Okay, okay. So um, there is a comic I have yet to read, but uh-huh. there's a comic where Mobius uh, is introduced, and he uh, is a part of the trial of the Fantastic Four because they're ruining time. Because Reed time travels like. All the time, right? No. Oh yeah, <laughs> Fantastic Four. There's nowhere they don't go. Like you know, like, except Apple. You know, like, they hate it there. Like Subterranea, let's go. Let's go. Be, let's go meet Mole Man. You know, like or let's space. Let's go meet Ego. Like there's there's literally nothing the the Fantastic Four have not explored. And yes, so time they've interfered with a world apocalyptic event. Uh, and they they prevented it, and that caused some some peeps to be not happy, uh, and so they go to the TVA and they go on trial for for messing with time, and the person who ends up saving them and was a judge was Mobius. Oh my God, Ryan! Where is where this going? Where, where I'm is? just where is this going? It's, it can go my- so many places. <laughs> my my theory is is that i think if we have a new saga we need a new phil colson and i think mobius is going to be the time phil colson oh like, shit animation. that's really good Are we we're yeah. basically gonna see a re re-emergence of uh of the avengers in a different way like the new generation of the avengers so i'm mm-hmm. assuming that these shows are preparing us for the movies that'll give us a new version of the infinity wars Infinity War. It's a secret war. Hands yes, down, it's going to be secret war. Yes! Secret oh, war, secret war, secret 100%. war, yes. Yes. No no better battle, no better battlefield than like, because the secret war is the second one, the, the more modern one, which is done by Hickman, which is a fantastic comic. For those of you who have not read it, uh, once again, Doom proves that he is the solution to every problem. Um, uh, is that one is about time itself, essentially, and and also like the 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 appropriate reality. So, what better saga to do in in the MCU than this one? I mean, mm-hmm. uh, it's it's the perfect story. It's like the absolute perfect story. And and Anna, I mean, your excitement just definitively proves that we need to go that route. Yes. Oh man. oh man. Speaking of excitement, this episode had what I think might be the most Owen Wilson line of dialogue in all of Owen Wilson. And mm. it's when he's in the office and he's begging Renslayer to let him go into the field. And he says, I'm excited. I'm chomping at the bit. And I'm just like, that's the most Owen Wilson he has ever been. Lock it in. It's staying there. Frame that moment. Uh, her office has, I, I wish I had freeze framed it, but I didn't want to freeze and like pause, but there's a lot of stuff in that office that I feel yeah. like if we took a good gander at it, there's some, some stuff there. And I wanted to ask if either of you got a good look at the thing she grabs when she runs out of the office in a panic right at the end. Cause at first I thought it was like a little Shoto sword, but it didn't look like that. It looked it's more the like, baton. A, like a she grabs the, the baton. It's a baton. The baton okay. they all carry. It's the oh, is that what it, it, it's just that that prod baton they have? Yeah, yeah, the the one that like pretty much vaporizes like anyone they touch. Yeah. Oh, okay. All Did right. anyone notice? So like, I don't know. I was trying to remember if so like the timekeepers. Like, if you see the statues, the ones in her office, they're like, uh, they're all three of them have different facial expressions. So remind me of like, uh, see no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil. So all mm-hmm. of them had. It, re- it also reminded me of like, you know, like for, for drama class or like, you know, you would have the mask, like the sad and happy. It kind of gave me that, like, it, it just doesn't feel right. Like the timekeepers having different facial expressions was just very, um, I don't know. It, it just, it gave me very trickster vibes. I, something about it was, was off only because like, I was trying to remember in the show if like, that any imagery of the timekeepers, if all of them looked different and they kind of tend to look the same, not the same face, but I, it's just something that really stuck out to me when we, like when they panned into her office. Yeah. Those statues were creepy, weren't they? Yeah. They, they just gave to off be, a weird vibe. 
Could, does anyone else find it weird that the Kang statue is directly behind Renslayer with his arms out and downwards? Like, what? Yeah, his, his arm. Like, I, I, I can't have to do re- the camera view here, but everything. it's like it was like that. It was like like one of these. I'm just gonna have to rewatch the second episode and like. Mm-hmm. I just feel like there's but, just so much stuff you can't possibly look at it. Is he for sure? Like one of the three, is Kang for sure? Because I know they dress like him. But I like I don't remember there being others like him. I don't know. So is he definitely one hundred percent one of those three people as King of the Conqueror? There, oh, a hundred percent. I think the one, the one in the middle is Kang himself. It's, it's the one that's sure, biggest too. All the middle, the ones at the end are shorter, and the middle one is the tallest. Ah, yeah. uh, okay. Yeah. Um. In in. In Kang's world, there is a council of Kangs, and they're all different timelines, and each one looks different. There's like an old man Kang, there's a woman Kang, there's a... So, the three timekeepers, who are all about keep time the way we say, and don't cause variants, are all themselves variants of each other? Yes. Yes. Yikes! I know. This is great. This is great. (laughs) <laughs> this is so good yeah oh yeah no this is honestly to me this this show is i mean we've only had two other ones but they're all each very different mm-hmm. but i'd still think to in my humble opinion that loki's is the best yes loki's two episodes in we're calling it guys folks yeah, we're saying episodes. it right here it could flop terribly from here, but in my humble opinion, if that's the case, those first two episodes still hold will carry the show through Damn. because it's epic. And I honestly think like Disney, what they're doing with these like what I will what I will define as Marvel Plus series, I think Marvel just figured out how to and I don't even want to say like how to like tell like how to make villains look good, but there's really no other way to say it because like Zemo has never been better than yeah. being in the show. Um, and then in in uh, WandaVision, they introduced a villain who stole the show, like essentially just like came and came and conquered, you know, just totally yeah. out of nowhere. And right out of the gate, not only gave Scarlet Witch, uh, not only became a great antagonist for Scarlet Witch, but just brought in this villain that just jumped the ranks uh, way over other ones to to be one of Marvel's best villains. Yeah, we can talk about how great Kang and Thanos and Eric Killmonger were to wear blue in the face like Kang himself, but mm-hmm. none of those dudes had theme songs like Agatha all along. Shit, okay. yeah. That was none of them. Mm-hmm. And even Lady Loki now. Lady Loki, I'd say, is, is, is her own character, and I would say she's right up there with the, the top five villains. Easily, hands down. I've only seen her for like less than two minutes. <laughs> She's so clever. She yeah. Had, well, yeah. either either she was groomed by the TVA, or this fucking bitch is just the cleverest that ever clevered. Because how do you know? Like, I'm gonna hide in the apocalypse. This is exactly where I'm gonna hide. I can do whatever I want, and everything's gonna be fine. Mm-hmm. Can I can I also uh, collectively blow all of our minds because I just had a Marvel epiphany moment? That's right, people. Another one of our special and incredibly rare epiphany moments. Um, she did something that Loki could never do without a mind stone. She was able to mind control people. You know, without the power of a mind stone. You know, oh shit. Okay, so I kind of have this theory that I don't think she's actually a Loki. Wow. Ooh. I don't think she's a Loki. Something about her doesn't entirely feel like Loki. Or, because if you get down to it, right? He, even Loki tries to explain the way he enchants things or, or tricks people. That he, that is, that at the end of they're just still illusions. It, that he's just trying to play a game. But Hearst just feels more than that. Like quite nefarious. Where I feel like you don't really often see Loki with a an, with a very focused motivation, and even in the prior Marvel films, like he's doing a he's either doing a job or he's being a dick. You know <laughs> what I mean? Where this feels very different, and even her powers feel entirely different. Like the way she was able to jump, like in, jump bodies from people, was very fast. I don't know. It just I don't think she's a Loki. I'm saying it now. I don't think she's a Loki. 
She did say that she doesn't want to be called Loki, or she said, "Don't call me." Call that. me Loki. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah, because she's like, "Oh," because he said, "Like, oh, you're you're me," or something like that. And then she seems very dismissive about all that. But to be fair, if she wasn't a Loki, and if she isn't a Loki, then who the hell is she? All I know is it must have been so much fun for like those bit players to come on set and be like, "You just have to do a Tom Hiddleston impression," <laughs> and talk to. Tom Hiddleston in this store, and like they they look like they were having the time of their lives. But she's oh but she's using powers that Loki never had. Yeah, which is the mind he could never mind control people. He would duplicate himself to be somebody else. Yeah, but he would never mind control anybody. Which might feed into your theory, Ryan, because if she is working for Renslayer, maybe she's like, "You want me to do your bidding, Renslayer? Give me some weapons." Renslayer's like, "What? Well, we have all these Infinity Stones lying yeah. around, weighing down our papers. Here, here, have a yellow one. See what this does." There you or go. Do you, maybe the TVA can take because in the TVA you can't do magic, but how do we know they can't take magic from somewhere else? Yeah, all great theories, guys. I, know. I like where your heads are at collectively. Did you guys see there is a very quick, cheeky little reference to Thor in the Rocks Cart department store? Uh, it's when, uh, I forget the guy's name, Randy. I think when he's talking to Randy and yeah. uh, they're, they're kind of like, Randy's kind of backing away and Thor is just sort of advancing on him. And they pass by a shelf full of products. And one product that they just linger on for a bit longer and then they move away yeah. is Arm & Hammer. Oh. oh yeah <laughs> i didn't pick up on that but that's, oh, that's i, I mean one. i didn't make the connection that that was a thor reference but that's pretty good <laughs> oh damn that's, that's really good. funny that's good there's a lot of great product placement in that uh in that rocks cart experience yeah i mean I... rocks on is interesting because rocks on's played a big role throughout the marvel cinematic universe it's been in daredevil it's been I think it's even been in uh, some MCU stuff as well. I can't think of the movie though, but it's definitely been there. So I think so. It, seen more from that. It's all over Spider-Man because uh, I know in in the Marvel universe, I'm pretty sure what we have as the MetLife building, which was once upon a time the Pan Am building right above Grand Central Terminal in New York City, is the Roxxon building mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. Marvel. Uh, so they're sort of everywhere. And I don't know if they're based off of Exxon Mobil, the real life company, or if that's just a coincidence because they almost have the same logo. But uh, if it is, I'd feel bad for Exxon Mobil because they are getting slandered by the <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Uh, but I know they're run by the Serpent Society. So. Ooh, oh. I hate those guys. Yeah. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Why did it happen? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I, you know, speaking of the show though, I, I think we've really kind of pulled what we can and, and really worked with what we've, what we got. Um, you know, I, I'm actually kind of curious though, like, are we going to get like one or two more carrier uh, cameos and or introductions? Are we going to see Lady Sif? Are we going to, cause she's still around in some way, shape or form. That's a good question. I I feel like they have a great opportunity to save money by having all the big character reveals be just variants of Loki. Uh, and I know that's, you know, we all love Loki and we love seeing Loki, but that, I know that sounds slightly less exciting than, hey, kids, it's Mephisto. But the, there's it, it just feels so right and it, because it's a tv show it's it's more cost effective and so the the economics work we still haven't met that trailer version that we saw of loki where he's in like an arcade and he's got like a, a button that says like vote for me or something like that oh, yeah. so i'm assuming we're going to have some kind even if it's just a montage some kind of part of the show where it's all just about there's a bunch of other lokis to put down because i found it kind of interesting how this episode ended with them meeting who I assume is the big bad of this particular run with Lady Loki. I thought, you know, we were going to have to wait and get to her, go through some other bosses before we get to the final boss. But no, she's just right there. So I'm assuming we're getting more cameos from more variants. And I think we'll get one crazy thing, uh, like right at the end. Um, Mm -hmm. Something that'll just get people excited 
because this is really going to pave a big way in the MCU, they said, more so than WandaVision and Falcon Winter Soldier have. Okay. So I wouldn't be surprised to see like um, a Wong level cameo, like something like him show up, because I think that'd be dope. Uh, but I feel like they're going to restrict themselves to a bunch of Lokis because that's so much fun and it's so cost effective for them. I think they'd be crazy not to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to, before we get to Anna's, Anna's requests and, and theories here, I'm going to stop you about the money thing because it's Disney. If they, if, if Kevin Feige said, you know, I want to put Dr. Doom in this episode and can, and I don't think he even needs to justify it. He's like, I need, you know, $10 billion. Yeah, here, Kevin, just take what you need. Here, just take the wallet. Daddy's wallet <laughs> is open. Daddy's wallet is open. Credit card has no limit. Just tell daddy how much I, we owe you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's, yeah, so, Get so that first Mickey of all, money, if, bitch. First of all, if, you're, if your point is why they wouldn't do it is money, you're dead wrong. You're just going to stop you right there. Me, Kevin, though, shit's money. Kevin, though, is very particular about who he wants and why. Yeah. I, I I really want to see the world where Feige's interpretation of Doom cost Disney ten billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how. But Let's yeah. use the hologram to bring back Lawrence Olivier, and he's playing yeah. Doom. <laughs> so, uh, Anna, cameo wise, what are you thinking? If your sneaky Feige radar is turned up, who's showing up in this show? I would say Wong. It was a Wong uh, from. Is that his name from Doctor Strange? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think him. Yeah, you're going Wong too. Yeah, honestly, I have. I, I just feel like there's so many connections to Doctor Strange. It just feels like it's really the TVA within itself is denying that timeline or like that Marvel what we would think is canon storyline about the wizards. I just feel like this is is not. Something about it is not correct. And I feel like someone someone has to come in to say, like, this this was never right. This was never right. I don't know. I don't know why it feels like it needs to be corrected. I that or Doctor Strange. Here's okay. Here's an interesting thing. And the reason why I bring this up is because there's one actor in the roster that is confirmed. But we have no idea who they are yet. And on, on their IMDb page, it is not listed who they're playing. Mm -hmm. And it's Richard E. Grant. And he was rumored to be in WandaVision, but he's not. And, and he is confirmed and on the billing for Loki. So we have to figure out who this Richard E. Grant actor is going to play. And my brother mentions it a lot, mentioned it on the first, I think it was the first time we talked about WandaVision, which was he thinks he he's a perfect actor you would cast for Mephisto. But I think actually, and again, I think the Mephisto, I think we need to just totally, just totally deep six, yeah. you know, the whole Mephisto theory, because every director that has been asked about Mephisto has no idea what anyone's talking about. And it could be the Marvel ploy, like, oh yeah, I don't know. But they just legit, like, like, no, like there's you not. You want to know no why? Mephisto. Because we're dying for mutants. Just let's just say it. Let's just say it. We want mutants. We want someone to say the word mutants. We want there to be a multiverse where we get to see the mutants. Mutant and proud. Yes. <laughs> well, remember, guys, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't, didn't exist. exist. Oh, so, so everybody oh, being like, "Who's wow. Mephisto, man?" Exactly. <gasps> we don't know this guy. We Trust me, we're demon alone. They're being sneaky. Yeah. But uh, uh, my, it, where's your compass pointing, Ryan? If not, if not to the nightmare. Yeah. Night. Ooh. Okay. So that's because it. nightmare was mentioned. A nightmare dimension was mentioned mm. in the first episode. Oh. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Th that's good. I, damn, Ryan. I like that. I've heard a third theory about him, but I like nightmare better. I have heard old man Loki. Oh, I would hate Richard it. Grant I, I, I don't like this whole like they did an old man Logan. They've done an old man Hawkeye. They've done like they've done an old man Star Lord for crying out loud. They're doing one currently right now. I don't need another old man story. I don't care. I mean, it could be that could be a, a, definitely a very likely theory. It definitely plays to your let's have another Loki mm -hmm. character in the in the fold here. But I think Nightmare might play a role in it because you know again the the whole theme was the fear 
gives the illusion of control, right? Yeah. So uh, Nightmare would be a good role and his magic is green. And so, but I just don't like the idea of Lady Loki being a disguise or being anything other than her, an alternate version of Loki. Like if she's not, if she's not an alternate version of Loki, but it, and it's Nightmare creating a persona like Loki, um, but then, what makes but what makes her a Loki aside from the fact that she wore the like the the headpiece and the outfit? Nothing. She never identified as Loki, and we're making the assumption that it's Loki. I just feel like this is stolen. That this is another like disguise, another like another thing to kind of throw us off the scent, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Because I I I think Lokis to me are like uh, what do you call it like. Eight like the agents in the matrix like it's like okay you know what's coming you know there's a virus so i'm just gonna dress like the virus and no one will think mm-hmm. anything else that i'm just trying to cause chaos but i really have a very strategic specific plan i don't know it's it's a tough say it's a tough say I but i do like the nightmare idea only because it's been mentioned and that's that's why yeah, but okay. I, but did your lady loki i mean you're not wrong on about lady loki but we just, just assume just... she's Lady Loki because even the way she looked at Loki was like, "You're not, you're not anything to me." Right. And Loki loves himself. He loves himself more than anybody else. So why would the Lokis not? I don't know. It just even their because it's interaction... a variant, Anna. You know, no, Loki's no, like... <laughs> because Loki's so self-absorbed. He's, he's an egomaniac. He's in love with himself. Like, how would you, I don't know. Even their interaction didn't feel right. Of course, it would be banter. Like, no, I'm the better. I'm the better. But like, not. It didn't. It, like, I thought that we would get like a moment of like, I really like that you did this. Well, I really like that you figured it out. You know what I mean? Like that kind of like I acknowledge that you're not too bad, but something about it felt very off. Like, yes, it was very hostile, but even she, aside from the outfit, there's nothing that said that she's a Loki. We just assume she's a Loki because the TVA tells us she's a Loki. We're supposed to just assume she's bad. Yeah. And like, even Ooh, like, like Wik- Wikipedia says like, yeah, it's Lady Loki guys, but you're right. She hasn't introduced herself as, as Lady-, Lady Loki. And if we know one thing about Loki, it's that, he makes an entrance and he tells you exactly who he is and why. Exactly. He's there. He loves to talk. That guy loves to talk. She didn't say shit. <laughs> yeah. She didn't say anything. She wasted, in fact, she wasted his time. She wasted his time on purpose because she knew that's his weakness. There's just something about it that doesn't feel right. We're just making we're making the assumption that she's Lady Loki because the TVA is telling us she's a Loki. Mm-hmm. But I but already we know that the TVA is full of propaganda, a very, very uh, brainwashing propaganda. Like the people are uh, people, people in the TV are only there for that singular purpose. Nothing else, nothing more. So what mm-hmm. is right? What is good? What is bad? We don't know yet. We're just seeing kind of like a storyline kind of slowly unfold. Mm-hmm. These That's are really good. Yeah, I know. I don't think really he's Lady really Loki. Good. I don't think he's a Lady yeah. Loki. I like all of this. I, I like know. This is this. so I good. Can't wait. I can't wait to unravel more of this. Just like whoever she is is unraveling. Don't you love time, time heists? Time heists are the best. A <laughs> couple of weeks ago when I, I, I came home from getting my, my first uh, vaccine shot and I was kind of like, oh, I don't feel like doing anything. So I sat down and I watched Tenet for the first time, which is a very time bendy, crazy Nolan movie. And I was very very happy with how much of it i was able to understand which wasn't a whole lot considering i was like uh i'm nauseous because <laughs> i get nauseous with needles but yeah i love time ice i love time anything where time gets moved around and bent around and now we have this show and who knows where it's going but i love everything you guys have put on this table mm-hmm. and i i just hope that kevin are you watching and listening i know you are I know you're sneaky. Listen to what those two said and maybe possibly cherry pick some stuff from that. And if you want to confirm Mephisto, we'd be all right. We would love an email. Would Actually, we would, would you email. like to join the podcast? You would yes, be honored oh guest. My God. We can spend guest. the whole podcast trying to 
ask you questions and circumventing your secrecy by being like, can you at least tell us the third letter in the 14th movie of Phase 5? Can you tell us the third letter, please? I don't think, Ryan, you would be able to talk. I think you would be like, oh, I just feel like, as he's like, just like there, I just like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> he he talked like, to you. He, he'd be there for like an hour saying something profound, and you'd just be like, I like turtles. I like Spider Man. I like turtles. <laughs> I like turtles. <laughs> so, actually, there's probably the best interpretation of what would happen if I ran into Kevin Feige is uh, if you've ever seen Community, um, yes. when, uh, oh, <laughs> what's his name? Meets LeVar his, Burton. Uh, meets, yes. Yeah, LeVar. <laughs> You can't disappoint a photo. You can't disappoint. <laughs> That's what would happen to me, guaranteed, hands down. I would just be totally like shell shocked and just, you know, yeah, yeah. just wow. sob to yourself. <laughs> it's okay. He does this all the time. Happy yeah. sobs a lot. It's fine. But regardless, Kevin, come on the show. Yes. Sobs or no sobs, absolutely. Are, Ryan will put out. Welcome. Yes, he will. And uh, I'd love to sit down and talk with Michael Waldron, who is, uh, I think, the showrunner of Loki, because he's, his name is popping up in a lot of places, and he is slowly becoming one of my new favorite writers, like, ever. This so, is so good. Michael Waldron, call us, baby. Uh, so, Ryan, any final thoughts, words, theories? Uh, just please, no more theories about Christine Everhart being a nihilist, because I told you many times that is ridiculous. It's not going to happen. So please oh, stop God. putting that forth. Just, oh, jeez. You know what, though? <laughs> more and more, I'm starting to think Annihilus might be the villain of Fantastic Four, the first villain. I have a theory. I have my own theory on that. But Leslie I'm Bibb's schedule is clear, so you're, you're, you're pretty right. Yeah. Uh, not that Christy Neverhart is Annihilus, but that Annihilus is going to be a character at some point. Um, what I will say, actually, I'm glad you brought it up, because if Lady Loki is not... Loki is is not Lady Loki, and in fact, the Nightmare card does prove true, um, which would be interesting because I think Nightmare can sort of control people in a similar fashion. But that could be my mind just trying to connect the dots. But what I will say is, my theory will still hold if Nightmare is a villain or like the like the in the end the cameo kind of thing because. Like the, the puppet master, if he is the puppet master, because what better way to cause the Nexus level event that's about to happen, like the show ended, uh, than to have like that nightmare scenario become true, right? And giving that villain that kind of power. And I also, I still think Renslayer is still a very big key to this whole thing. Um, the fear of loss, right? That also would give nightmare power. Um, uh, all these kind of factors would play a significant role in altering the sacred timeline. So that's, I, that's my kind of last thoughts with it. I would say to the listeners out there, um, provide us your suggestions and feedback. I'd, I'd be curious to hear if, if we're on the same, uh, wavelength or on the same timeline. Mm. Um, but so I will there? say, <laughs> um, I will say though, I will say though, I am curious to hear in the chat what details you might have picked up that we missed. And I would like to know. I would like to know because I always seem to miss something. But um, yeah, that's my, I'm glad you asked. That's my last thoughts. So I like it. Anna, what about you? What, Lady what you Loki's not real. There? Lady Loki's not real. It's not Lady Loki. I don't know. I don't know who could be. I, part of me thinks like, well, what if it's, you know, Wanda's magic is normally red. What if it's Wanda pretending and she's trying to destroy very specific timelines that could get her to her children? Oh, I think you just broke Ryan's brain. <laughs> oh my God. Look at her. But her magic's red. <laughs> but I know, but if she's smart enough, she'll know that she has to look like she has to play a part, right? She has I to... People can't know her motive. If they just so, see this chaos, they won't figure it out. So hmm. I say that, though, wholeheartedly as a joke, and I'll tell you why. Because one thing that Wanda does is the mind thing, where she, like, yes, 
Oh my God. Exactly. No. She has to play a part, right? She cannot give out her card. She, no one can know why she's doing what she's doing. So why not play the part of the trickster of the chaos? If people think that this is chaotic, they will never know what she's doing. Right. And when yeah. she said it, I'm not like you. I'm not like you. Oh, yeah. it could be. We should pay attention and see if every once in a while she slips into a, a vaguely Euro Eastern European yes. accent. And then we'll be like, we got you, Wanda. Damn. We see you. It could be. But it's not like, it's not Lady Loki. Just oh my God. a disguise. If it's Wanda. If it's Wanda, Wanda, if it's Wanda, Wanda I'm going to throw up. I will straight up throw up. <laughs> 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 Call right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, like just like your excitement and puke at the same time. Like, Captain, <laughs> like have you seen a Team America? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it just sounds. And when she reveals herself, her brother runs in and says, "I bet you didn't see that coming." Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> God, I hope not. I really oh, yeah, <laughs> that is what I think is happening. That we're just Beautiful. we're finally getting into a bigger universe. It's starting to expand. And it's getting out of control. I like it, man. I like it a lot. I mean, I I got nothing too profound to add here. I think er, both of you had some things here that just changed my soul in in, in the regards to the theories you're dropping. So thank both of you for that. I think all I can say in regards to what happens next here is I feel like Mobius himself because I'm excited. I'm, I'm chomping at the bit. Um, so I, I'm just I'm in Owen Wilson mode. And yeah. I need more. I, I need episode three. You know, after that, give me episode four and five, and then, and then you can you can wait a bit and then drop episode six on me. I'll still be excited for it because I'm Mobius. Um, uh, yeah, bring bring it on, bring on Mephisto and everything. I, I don't even know what I'm. I'm just gonna keep saying Mephisto. That's it. That I don't even think he's showing up. I'm just gonna keep saying his name because that's how 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 this episode just got into my pores and, and wrecked me in all the best possible ways. So that was Loki episode two uh, of uh, our infinity rewatch recap. Beautiful stuff. I think you guys got, uh, I think this is one of those instances where Kevin Feige hears fans talk and thinks, damn, how did they know that? I, know. I think between the two of you, you, you dropped some, some damn. wisdom. Oh, let's see, Ryan, watch us all be wrong. Just watch us all. Yeah. Time. Oh no. I I wholeheartedly feel we're gonna get this. Comp but that's the beauty of it. Even if we're wrong, that means we're gonna get a totally different story than what we predicted. So how are they gonna do that? I know. <laughs> Tell us. Maybe every character is Dmitri Smirnikov, the chameleon, and Loki has just been talking to one person this Shit. whole time. Shit. Could you imagine? Ah, we've never seen them in the same room. Uh, <laughs> that's well. That's enough rabbit holes. For one night, but uh, thank you so much, Anna, once again for joining us. Thank you for uh, having me. I had so much rewatch. fun. I always have so much fun. Yeah, yeah, it's a great time. We love having you on here. Uh, everything you've brought to the table is so insightful. Well, you know? I've been sitting on this for two weeks. Oh God, <laughs> I'm like out of control. That's <laughs> so bad. I was telling my husband these things, and he's like, "Get away from me! I don't even know what you're talking about." <laughs> it's like. <laughs> It was like a th you ran up to him and just ranted for three yeah. hours while I was like, gesturing to What if it's board. Wanda? And he's like, what? <laughs> who does this do with who? <laughs> it's like, it's like, this is, is this like a real life talk or is this TV talk? Oh, it's TV talk. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> oh. Ryan, where can the good people find you outside of uh, the TVA? Ooh, good. Oh, damn. I was going to say TVA too. Uh, they can find me in the Battle of New York. Uh, no, um, yeah. uh, they can find me at twitch.tv forward slash Xbox Canada. Uh, I'm still doing my thing on Xbox Canada. So feel free to check me out there. And also, you can find me reposting things on Twitter uh, at Crusader Online. Beautiful. And you can find me working PR at Exxon Mobile trying to sue the pants off Marvel for dangerous, dangerous defamation. Uh, that's a lie. I don't work for them because they're evil. I don't know. I don't know anything about Exxon. Prove you're not evil. You're a company. Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter and sometimes on Instagram and YouTube more times at Andrew Fantasia. And then you can find me right here on the Rebel Scum Podcast Network when I'm not talking about Marvel. I'm talking about the Star Wars and the wars that happen in the stars because guess what? I saw the trailer for Star Wars Episode Ten. Mephisto confirmed. <laughs> oh like, my! 
<laughs> Who do you think Darth Maul's father is? Oh, sure. Uh, thanks so much for listening, everybody. I hope you all have a marvelous day. Hey, scumbags. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.